Hello, my name is Kevin Rice. I'm the field crop entomologist and state extension specialist at the University of Missouri. And today I'm just going to be giving a brief update on the University of Missouri's pest monitoring network. So we have this network and it's located on the IPM page. There's the web address down here. And this is a pest monitoring network that provides real time, up to date insect activity throughout the state of Missouri. So if you go to the website, you can see the insects that we are currently tracking listed here, and you can click on those insects and you can see the maps where we have traps set out. And each week we upload data on the number of individuals captured or the activity in each of the locations in the state. And there are a couple of ways to receive this information. If you'd like, you can click on uh, receive the alerts for specific insects in specific areas, and that will be emailed to you. Or you can actually just go to the website and uh, click through it and see the information. In addition to the map and the locations of all the trapping insects throughout the state, we also have our fact sheets and our integrative pest management guidelines for each of the species. So we have our thresholds on there and management options for the insects. So this is just an example. When you click on the, uh, this is for the Japanese beetle and it's showing you last year's capture. You can actually go in the past and actually see some of the previous numbers and the locations where they are very abundant and active. And again, uh, this is sort of just to tell you insect activity in those regions. This is not designed to replace in-field scouting. So each field is unique and insect population dynamics have factors like weather and local farmscape factors that influence pest abundance. So this doesn't tell you to spray your field, but it tells you Japanese beetles are active in your area. And now it's time to go scout and look in your field for those pests. Again, the fact sheets are on there as well. So if you're interested in some of the, the biology or management for any of those pests, they're listed here. And for those of you that were familiar with the pest monitoring system in the past, you may have noticed that it's reduced the number of target insects. And so the reason for that is when it started about you know, 20 years ago, the pest complex was completely different in Missouri. Uh, we've had a lot of different management options like GMO crops and reduction in broad spectrum insecticides that have reduced the key pests. And we also have new players that we have focused on and added to the network. So when I started, this was the full list that we were working with. And we have reduced that list of species down to six target individuals. And I'll explain why really briefly. Uh, for instance, spotted wing drosophila used to be captured in our network, but the science has shown that spotted wing drosophila is established throughout the entire state of Missouri, and it always emerges in mid-August for its peak flight. So trapping doesn't really provide much more information. So that's why, you know, these traps cost money. And the actual spotted wing drosophila traps also catch a lot of other drosophila species. So it takes a lot of time and labor to go through those traps and it just doesn't provide additional information. So currently we have narrowed down our trapping species to these six species. And these are either species that do not have good degree day models of when they emerge or they have migrations that make them difficult to predict when they arrive. So that's the list of species that we have. And again, you can click on these, you can get the information of where the traps are and the weekly activity for these insects. Again, my name is Kevin Rice. If you have any further questions, feel free to email me. Thank you.